Mark chapter number 1. Mark chapter number 1, commencing at verse number 40 and culminating at verse number 45. Mark 1, commencing at verse 40, culminating at verse number 45. Uh, as Adrian said, I no longer feel like a stranger to the sister Isle of Tobago, but it's always still a privilege uh, to be here with you all. Uh, I'm thankful for the invitation. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, and it says, And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him, and saying, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I am willing be cleansed immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed and he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away and Jesus said to him see that you say nothing to anyone but go show yourself to the priests and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them but he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in the unpopulated areas and they were coming to him from everywhere. The title given to me is Go Into All the World, but I want to use my preacher's prerogative and change it to touching the untouchable. Touching the untouchable. And you'll understand it at the end. While everyone knows, there's no one here who does not know that we have the great commission, go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's the great commission. There's no one here who doesn't know it. What I want you to know is what we need to start doing is getting the gospel in us before we share the gospel. Sometimes we just walk around and we coldly quote scripture to people, but I want to show you from this example when the gospel becomes incarnational. What I mean by that is when it becomes a part of you and you could then tell me why you are a believer of the gospel, why you are a Christian because of how Jesus touched you and changed your life, you may have a better impact on mine than just quoting scripture. I want you to see this from Mark chapter number one, verse number one. Mark says, this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. And many times we see the word gospel and we immediately think the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, while that's correct, when Mark says this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, what he shows you for at least the first 12 chapters is the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. Jesus interacting with people, Jesus healing people, Jesus showing people that he he is all sufficient and all that they need. That is the gospel, Jesus for everyone. Sometimes we say gospel and we quickly say the death, burial, and resurrection. But I want you to understand gospel differently tonight. The gospel is Jesus for everyone. Is that all right, church? And so as Jesus is walking around, he begins his ministry. Verse number 40 tells us that there comes a leper to him. And I need you to understand who this leper is. We don't know his name, but we know some things about him simply by virtue of him being called a leper. A leper is someone who is considered unclean by Jewish law. And so he does not live with the residents of Israel. He is placed on the outside and anyone who's on the outside is no longer considered one of us so he has now because of his uncleanness become one of them now let me tell you who the them are the them are the gentiles the them are the samaritans the them are the uncircumcised the them are those who eat pork the them are those who don't know god as far as a jew is concerned one of them is not just not one of us, but one who is condemned. You all getting this? So this leper is considered like one of them, so he's viewed to be condemned. 
What that means then is they treat him like an alien and a stranger. What that means then is the promises that were given to Israel no longer apply to him. What that means then is he is now without hope and without God in this world because of his leprosy. And you're looking at me funny. I'm not talking about leprosy or lepers. I'm talking about you because Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 11 would say, but you gentiles who were called uncircumcision by the circumcision in the flesh at a time you were strangers you were aliens you were without hope you were excluded from the commonwealth of israel but god but god but god and so you should be able to relate to this but this is only applicable to people who can be honest with where they are and themselves the truth is we were not all saints we were not all called holy we were not all walking the way we were walking now. There are some people who were on the wrong sides of the tracks before they met Jesus. And so inside here, we might have, y'all okay if I could be real? Inside here, we might have some drunkards. Inside here, we might have some thieves. Inside here, we might have some adulterers or fornicators in a past life but God. And so I need you to see this from the leper's standpoint. He is without hope. He is not considered to be blessed or one of us, but he comes to the man who could fix everything. Now watch this. Even though he comes to the man that fixes everything, while he knows that Jesus is able, he wants to know if Jesus is willing. Now I need to help you inside here, church. There's a difference between willingness and ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a vehicle and I go to services with it all the time. Uh -huh. And every now and then, someone would come to me toes and ask me for a drop. By virtue of having a car, I have the ability to drop them wherever they need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not always. <clears throat> uh -huh, uh -huh. See, now you're looking at me funny. All the church people start judging me. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just saying, I'm just saying. When you look at this leper, this leper understands that Jesus has ability, but the question is not his ability. The question is his willingness. Now, the question of his willingness is there because the leper knows who he is. The leper knows that I am unclean. I am unworthy to be in Jesus' presence. I am a low down, dirty shame, nothing but a wretch. So Jesus may not be willing to do something for me. And I'm just glad that Jesus is not like one of us. So he comes and he says, I know that you are able. But if you are willing, make me clean. Now, now the part I love about this text Jesus looks at him and scripture says the first thing he feels is compassion. See, I'm glad that my Savior is a compassionate Savior because the truth is I may come inside here and tell you something I struggle with and you all might find it difficult to have compassion for me. But I'm thankful I know a Jesus like my Jesus who could see me in the mock and the mire and will not be quick to stone me. He will first try to give me compassion before he gives me judgment. I need you all to see this because some of us fail to realize that we will like not just this leper. You all know the woman who was caught in the very act? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many of us will like that woman. We were deep in sin. We were caught in the very act and everybody, if they had a chance, would stone you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Jesus comes and because he's moved with compassion, he says, I will not throw a stone at you. Go and sin no more. So I love my Jesus. Jesus has compassion for this leper. And in his compassion, the first thing he does is touch him. But I need you to understand that Jesus needed not to touch this man to heal him. But this man has been excommunicated, has been exiled. This man does not know what it's like to have somebody there for him in such a long while that before Jesus healed him, he healed him. <clears throat> 
See, 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 this man didn't just need healing from his leprosy because of the lepers being alienated. He had nobody there for him. So here's Jesus coming alongside him to tell him, I am here for you. That touch meant more than his healing. Well, preacher, how could you say that? Because of that touch, he did what he did. But let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. Jesus is willing to come alongside each and every one of you uh -huh. to allow you to know I am willing if you will let me. Uh -huh. Now, the reason why this is important, that I know we're talking about evangelism, but we need to get this first before we go to evangelism. The reason why this is important is if you could see how much Jesus cares for you, it's not just going to change how you live. It's going to change how you speak about it. It's going to change your every aspect of living because you see him differently. So Jesus touches him to say, I am willing. And then he said, be thou clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. That's the text. Now, Jesus has one word rule. Meet me in the Bible. In verse number 44. Well, begin at verse 43. Scripture tells us, And Jesus sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. The only command Jesus told him is follow the law of Moses, go find the priest, and don't tell anybody anything. You just do this thing privately. But I need you all to understand something. The one thing this man could not do was keep quiet. See, so you're all missing this. This man received something that he never thought he would have received in this lifetime. This man got something better than anything he would have gotten before. This is unlike anything he has ever experienced. The only thing he couldn't do was not talk about it. This was too good to stay silent on. Now, this is something that is innate in our culture, and we just don't realize it. Things that fascinate us, things that attract us, things that we think to be too good to be true, we talk about. Just today, just today, let me give you a practical example. Just today, I am driving with Brother Murray. And I was telling him that my wife was not doing so well. And so on yesterday, I had to buy coconut water. And uh, I told him that I saw this guy, not too far from here actually, selling coconut water yesterday about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And before I alighted the vehicle, I prayed. Because I just knew that the price was not right. I just knew it. I just knew it. In fact, I told my wife, I'm going to get robbed before I even exited the vehicle. Uh -huh. I went, I walked up to the guy, said, how much for the water? He told me the price and my heart failed me. <laughs> I was going to walk back, but then I remember that my wife is not well and this would do her well. So I came back and I bought the water and I jumped in the vehicle I said, honey, guess what just happened? She said, you get robbed? Yep. Uh -huh. I'm sharing this story with Brother Murray. And what he tells me is he knows a guy uh -huh. who gives good water at a good price. Uh -huh. Now, what he's doing is sharing his experience. Because this experience is too good to keep to myself. We do that when we experience good food. We do that when we experience good movies. We even do that when we experience a good preacher and a good song leader. We like to share 
what we have, but sometimes we're too quiet when it comes to Jesus. I don't know about you, but I have come a mighty long way, and it's not because of me, it's not by my own doing, it's because of Jesus in my life. So everywhere I go, I'm willing to say Jesus did this. The man you're seeing now is not because of his own ability, but because God's grace has been upon him. If you only knew who I was before you see me now, you would realize how good God has been. And so it, it doesn't take long to get me excited about Jesus. You just say, gee, and I get excited already because Jesus is just too good to me. But if you can't see Jesus like that, you will never have enough praise in your heart to worship or enough thankfulness to share him. You all getting this? This leper broke the law of the Savior because what the Savior did to him was too good to keep to himself. There was a, a chorus we used to sing back in the day. Said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I couldn't keep it to me. <clears throat> I need you inside here right now to think about the you that you really are. Let me help you. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter who you are, you have a sin problem. Now, some of you may look at me and think that, you know, you have less sin than I do. It doesn't matter if you have less, you still have. The Bible then says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin, the payment for sin is death. If you have one, you get the same payment as me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the truth is, if you're honest enough, as much as you have sin, it's not in your mind to sin. All right, all right. Okay, we need to talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> you all frightened me there, Brother Mike. <laughs> we need to talk about that tomorrow. It should not be in your nature to sin or to want to sin. But the truth is, for those of us who try to live, we wake up in the morning and we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. And as soon as you leave your house, the devil come after you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so whole day you, you spend this tug of war between trying to keep your righteousness yes, and wanting to give somebody a good piece of your mind and sin your soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, now this side was honest. Let me help this side over here. <clears throat> if you ever told somebody, boy, if I wasn't a Christian, you know the struggle. If you ever end up in a situation and you had to breathe and say, Lord, Father, We face the struggle. Sometimes it happens so much we fail to realize that we are in the struggle every day. Yes, and the truth is, when it comes to the struggle, you don't always come out victorious. That's why Paul was able to say, the good I want to do, that's not the good that I end up doing. And the thing I should not want to do, that's the, that's the thing I end up doing. Oh, wretched man. That I, the truth is, there's no one here who is not worthy of the title wretch. We're all wretches, but as much as I am a wretch, I thank God for Jesus because he was able to come down and still say, I'll save a wretch like you. So I'm honest enough to say that I am not worthy of the grace of God. I did some stuff in my life every now and then I still slip up, but God is so good. That in spite of my shortcomings, in spite of my inability to keep perfect, his grace still reaches me. And I just think if God is good enough for me, he's good enough for you too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now you all can understand this leper. Here's this leper. Here's this leper. He never thought that his life would be changed. He was going to be an outcast for life. And here he comes and he meets the one man that could do something. And this man doesn't just have the ability, but he has the willingness. And I explain that willingness to you. There are several people who would have seen this leper and just pass him straight, pass him by because of his condition. Let me just put a pause inside there, church. Sometimes we pick and choose who 
we give the gospel to. This wasn't on the script. Just believe that somebody inside here need this. Sometimes the reason why everybody in the church looks the same is because we are not willing to go and bring the gospel to someone who looks differently than us. So we're picking and choosing who is worth the gospel. You all get this? If it was up to us, some of us might not have been. I, I almost make a mistake and tell you what was in my closet. But if I did that, somebody would unplug this mic. <laughs> but the thing is, if we were to choose, we might not choose some of us inside here. But I want you to know the choice is not ours to make. The gospel is available to all. Jesus is savior of all, including those that look like lepers to us. And so what that means then is there's nothing wrong with finding the nearest prostitute and telling her that Jesus is all the man she need. Okay, that was too real for you. That was, that, was too, that was too real for you. What I'm saying is, we should not choose who we give the gospel to. We should just give the gospel freely. And anyone who is willing to allow Jesus in, we have opened doors towards them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This leper realized that while everybody else would abandon him, Jesus was there for him. And so... He comes to Jesus, Jesus gives him healing, and the only thing he couldn't do was keep quiet. Now look at the result, look at the result. Verse 45 tells us, but he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter the city but stayed out in the unpopulated areas and people were still coming to him from everywhere yeah. one man uh -huh. mm. see, 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 see. It, inside him I'm fixing to tell you sometimes we complain that we only have one man I understand that the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. But if the few laborers could work like this one man, could be as excited about their Jesus as this one man, could tell everybody, like this one man, how Jesus changed and impacted their life, then we would not have a problem filling this building. Everybody would want to come and meet that Jesus. And that brings me to the incarnational nature. This man about and to proclaim it freely. The question you have to ask is, what is the it? The it goes back to his story. He didn't just go quoting Bible saying, I want you to know that in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 1, Scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. He didn't just walk saying, Luke chapter number 1 from verse number 1 says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order. He didn't start quoting Scripture. He says, look at my life. He says, I was a leper, and I met Jesus, and I'm no longer what I used to be. Yes, I once was lost, but now I'm, I was blind, but now... What he did was take the gospel, put it in his life. So now what he preached was not just the gospel, but how the gospel changed his life. See, see, the truth is, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. This is sometimes the element that we miss when we're teaching the gospel. Sometimes, now, now I'm not trying to be mean, but sometimes we're too clinical and we just quote scripture at people. But what people really need to know is how Jesus could change my life in my situation right now. So you could come and tell me, Jesus, all you want. If you can't show me how Jesus could make a difference in my life, I would not be moved. So what we need are some people to say, look at me. Look at me. I was a leper, spiritual leper, but look at who I am now. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
and as I do that, it becomes possible for people to start thinking if it happened to you. That is actually a normal course of life that the church needs to adopt. When we're looking to take on a new venture, a new business, we want to do something new. We try to find people who've done it before. Yeah. Right? So, I go into the gym. And what I'm looking for now is a fellow who does not look like me. But, watch this, what I am also looking for is while this fellow does not look like me now, he used to look like me then. You all ain't getting this, you all ain't. See, because if I meet, just now, um, Tobago stand up. Just last night, I was cussing Joel. I shouldn't say that on the live stream. I'm saying, I know Joel for donkey years. And that man has maintained that size all the time. I say, I wish I had his genes. This man does real eat. You'll ever see this man eat? I would just sleep and dream of food. Thanks, Joel. So watch this. If I need help, I am not going to Joel. Joel never experienced my problem. So he can tell me how to fix my problem. I want somebody who was like me, but no longer like me, so I could ask you, what did you do? So now he's able to tell me I did X, Y, and Z. Now my thinking is this. If he was like me, and he did X, Y, and Z, and he's no longer like me, then if I do X, Y, and Z too, then I'll look more like him. What we need are some Christians who are not ashamed to say, look at who I was. But thank God I'm not like that anymore. Look at me now. So that people who look like me now could say, what did you do? And I could say, commit a man. His name is Jesus. He is more than you need. And he's everything you want. He is able to clean you and make you whole. He's able to give you grace and mercy. He's able to go the distance with you. He's a man who was sitting down in glory, all in divinity. But he saw me in the muck and mire of sin. And he leaves his divinity to come down to look like me. So now that I could look like him. That's the man I want to introduce you to. What we need is some Christians who could now take the gospel and make it incarnational. Yes.